Okay. So coming to the 2017 uh, one, the year that I also did A level, we'll see how many of you all can get this correct. Okay. The law of diminishing returns state. Okay. Maybe for those, I'll give you some, I'll give you some sort of positive news. Okay, so there is one, two, three, uh, four, five. I think there are five MCQs here, right? So this is the year that I did A levels, right? I also had an island rank. Okay, was among the top 50. So maybe for those who can get five out of five for this, maybe I also would have got five out of five. You at least would have got four out of five because I had a uh, A1 for econ, which is more than 93. I don't know what exactly the answers I put, but definitely would have had four or five. So maybe if you also are getting five out of five, okay, maybe, right, you also can still get into that rank. Right, you also can come among the top 50 in the island, given that you do your other subjects and other units in Econ also properly. Okay, we will see how many of you all can get that. The law of diminishing return state. Right. What does the law of diminishing return state? I want all of you all to give me an answer, guys, as long as you have attempted. Even if you have not attempted, at least now do it and give me an answer. Okay. As the size of a plant, guys, what is plant? Plant means factory, yeah, not a tree. Okay. Plant means your factory when you say, you know, production facility, my plant up. As the size of the plant increases, marginal product eventually decreases. As the size of the plant increases, average cost eventually decreases. As the firm uses more of variable input, given the quantity of fixed input, marginal product eventually decreases. If the, as the firm uses more variable input, Given the quantity of fixed inputs, average cost gradually decreases. As the firm uses more of fixed input, given the quantity of variable input, marginal cost is same. Okay. What is the first two answers that I will cut off? I will cut off answer number one and two. Why? Because one and two talks about the plant increasing. Now, what is plant? Plant means the size of your factory. Now, in the short run, now law of diminishing returns is the short run, right? In the short run, capital is fixed, labor is variable. Now, factory size or your plant size is capital. No, guys, you can't do that. So, I will cut off number two. Then, look at this. Number five, also I can cut off, right? Because five is saying, as the firm uses more of fixed input. They can't use more fixed input. No, fixed input is fixed, right? Your machines or buildings is fixed. So you can't say firm uses more of fixed input. That is also fixed inputs can't change. Exactly. That's why you call it fixed. Then you're left with three and four now. Which one is the more correct one? As the firm uses more of variable input, given the quantity of fixed input, MP eventually decreases. How does the marginal product looks like? goes up like this, eventually it decreases. This is how the marginal product curve looks like. So answer number three looks correct. We look at four. As the firm uses more variable input, given the quantity of fixed input, correct, average cost eventually decreases. Yes, does the average cost eventually decrease? AC. AC is like this, right? Average cost eventually it increases, no? It's not decreasing eventually. Marginal product is decreasing. Average cost eventually goes up. Ah, so therefore not number four as well. So which one is our answer? Number three. Fine. That's okay. One out of one so far. Five out of five. You are also eligible to an island rank. Or you can even, you got it wrong, you still can. Right. Right path. We'll see. If there are Implicit cost of production. What is implicit cost? Implicit cost means indirect cost. Okay, indirect cost. Can you give me some examples of indirect cost? Implicit or indirect cost? Foregone income, uh, foregone interest, normal profit, okay, uh, depreciation. Uh, those are all uh, indirect cost. Okay. What can we say? Accounting profit will exceed economic profit, economic profit will be zero, economic profit will exceed accounting profit, 
accounting profit will be zero. Economic profit and accounting profit will be equal. What can you say, guys? If there is an implicit cost, some of you are getting this easy one confused. Most of you are giving me the right answer. If there is an implicit cost, yes, think. If there is an implicit cost, whose profit will be more? A accountant's or an economic? Whose profit will be more? A accountant's profit will be more, guys. Think. Now, I'll just tell you, right? Just think. Let's say total revenue is 100,000. From total revenue, if you minus total cost, so let's say in the total cost, uh, uh, 50 is direct cost, uh, 20 is indirect cost. Let's say this is the implicit cost. Okay. So therefore, an uh, economist will say, economist will say, okay, my revenue is 100, my direct cost is 50, my indirect cost is 20. So therefore, my profit is only 30. Accountant will say, right, what will the accountant say? Accountant will say, look here. My this is 100, right? Yes, if you all have, if you all attend the past paper class, make sure that you regularly attend the class without texting 100 random people around, okay? If you have no other intention of learning, you can just leave, right? I just keep it there, okay, without texting random people that you find. And if that is how you think that you can find a girlfriend, pathetic, right? Uh, just think about yourself if you think that you know. I know. This, okay, I'll this random advice, right? For all the boys out here, okay. I'll tell you. You randomly sending a text to a girl through WhatsApp or somewhere, okay, will never lead you to that friend like uh, that girl liking you and you uh, being together. It doesn't work at all. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you this because we've also gone through that age. It never works, right? I know you all are on WhatsApp groups. There are so many numbers that is there. Okay, you can uh, send a random message saying hi or this or that, but that will never work, right? You can't find a girlfriend like that. If you really want, you know, you see the girl physically, go and talk. That way, there is a higher probability and you need to have the guts as well. <laughs> right. So, back to my thing. Okay, forget about that if you were not involved. Okay, then if you look at an accountant, an accountant will say, you know, this is the direct cost, this is the indirect cost. Accountant will say, okay, my profit is from my revenue, I will minus only direct cost. So my profit is 50. So can you tell me when there was an indirect cost, when there is an indirect cost, whose profit was higher? The economist or the accountant? The economic profit was 30. Accountant's profit was 50. So whose profit was the higher one? The accountant had a higher profit, right? So you can say, number one, accounting profit will exceed economic profit. Because why? A accountant only deducts direct cost. The economist, he will deduct direct and indirect. So therefore, his profit is low. Accountant will only direct the deduct direct cost. His profit is high. Is that clear, guys? Fine. Then the next one, question 18. Which of the following is not usually a characteristic of a perfectly competitive market? Not a characteristic. No individual firm has significant market power. Yes or no? Is that correct? No individual firm has a significant amount of market power. That is correct, no guys. That is like a characteristic. Correct. Market demand curve is perfectly elastic. Mark demand curve, yeah, some demand curve is perfectly elastic. Is it the market demand curve? Think. That is where they confuse you. In a perfectly competitive market, it is the what is perfectly elastic? What is this demand curve? This is the firm's demand curve. The firm's demand curve is perfectly elastic. But the market demand curve is that perfectly elastic. No. Market demand curve is downward sloping. This is the market demand curve. Right? 
So when they say market demand curve is perfectly elastic, is that correct? Yes or no? No, that's wrong because market demand curve is downward sloping. So this can be your answer. We'll check if there are anything else. Any individual firm can increase its production and sales without affecting the price. Any individual firm can increase its production or sales without affecting the price. That's correct. See, guys. Now, if now let's say the price is uh, set at fifty rupees, a rice farmer. So he can supply 10 kilos, supply 20 kilos, supply even 100 kilos. That is not going to affect the price, no? He can increase his production and sale, but is it going to affect the price in the market? No, because he's still a very small person. Even though he increases his production, he's still a small person out of so many people. That's not going to affect this. That is also correct. Then existing firms cannot bar the entry of new firms cannot bar the entry means cannot prevent the entry of a new firm connect the guys can one farmer uh, stop another farmer from coming no no he can't prevent right that farmer can also come that is also correct there are a large number of buyers and sellers that is the most obvious characteristic okay. so which one is our answer which is they're asking not a characteristic so what is not the market demand curve is perfectly elastic. Right. How many people got that right? Yes. Did you figure out that they're talking about the market demand curve, not the individual demand curve? Okay. Right. So far, are you all on three out of three? Well set for five out of five. Okay. Right. right. Two more questions. We'll see if you can get the five out of five. Now, next one. Table below shows some of the assumptions of perfect competition and monopolistic competition. Which combination of assumptions is consistent with this market? So when they say consistent with this market, what does that mean? They are asking which of this is correct, consistent, matching, right? It aligns with that. We'll think and see. Perfect competition. Homogeneous product. Is that correct? Quickly give me yes or no. Perfect competition, homogeneous product. Yes, correct. Monopolistic barriers to entry. Monopolistic barriers to entry? No. So therefore, first answer is wrong. Second one, perfect competition, differentiated product. No, no. Ah, therefore, I will not even read the other one. I'll just cut off. No. Perfect competition, large number of sellers. Yes, okay, that is correct. Monopolistic competition, small number of sellers. No, they are also you have large number of sellers. Wrong. Three is also correct. Perfect competition barriers to entry. No, therefore, I can cut off that. I'll not even read the other one. If one is wrong, it's wrong. No. No. Perfect competition, large number of sellers. Yes. Monopolistic competition, differentiated product. Yes. Ah, so then this can be your answer. 19 can be 5. Is that okay? That's an easy one, guys. Basic character. Then we'll come to the next one. Next one I already discussed, but I'll still uh, what, uh, discuss it again. Right? The answer is already there, though. But I'll uh, discuss it again. We discussed this last class. I told you there are very uh, similar questions that come. I'll try to give me a second. So this is question uh, 20 from the 2000, sorry, question 20 from the uh, 2017 level paper. Okay. A firm in a perfectly competitive industry is facing the following situation in the short run. Current price, current output, price, total cost, fixed cost, marginal cost. The firm whose goal is profit maximizing should do what? Remember I told you, I gave you certain steps. What is the first thing that you should check here, guys? What's the first thing? When you get a question like this, what's the first thing that you should check? How many of you all remember? First thing you need to check is, is the price that they are receiving greater than their average cost? Maybe if they have not given price, 
maybe individual price and AVC not given, then you need to check at least is their total revenue more than their total variable cost. Okay, you need to check that because if their price is not even enough, let's say this is no, then what should you do? Their price is not even enough to cover their average variable cost. What should they do? Then they should shut down and go. No. If it is yes, what should they do? If the price is greater than ABC, ah, then they can continue. So what does that mean? If they can continue means now you can check, check the second condition. Ah, what is my second condition that you have to check? Second condition you have to check is what is happening with MR and MC. That is the second condition. So what did I say guys? If MR and MC is equal to each other, what should they do? If MR and MC are equal to each other, that means they are already in the profit maximizing output. So don't change the output. They can maintain output or maintain output at the current level. Or in other words, don't change your output because you're already at the profit maximize. What if your MR is greater than MC? What should you do? Marginal revenue is greater. Then you have to increase output. If your marginal revenue is less than the marginal cost, then you hit is out. Right. So for this question, guys, we'll start uh, checking for these conditions now. Right. These are the conditions that I ask you all to uh, check for. Right. We'll check. You, know, you need to check these conditions. Right. Price. Have they given us the price? Mm, okay. Uh, price. How much is the average variable cost? Uh, okay. We have to find average variable cost, guys. Now. Okay. Uh, total cost is 4,000. Fixed cost is 1,000. How much is the total variable cost? Tell me. Total cost 5,000. Fixed cost is 1,000. Total variable cost is then? 4,000, not 6,000. Guys, remember total cost is the addition of fixed and variable. Okay? Okay. If total variable cost is 4,000 and you're producing 500 units, how much is your average variable cost? AVC. How much is your ABC? ABC is 8. Right? The price that you're getting is 6. Average variable cost is 8. Does it meet the first condition? Is the price greater than ABC? Does it meet the first condition? No. Is the price greater? The price is 6, ABC is 8. So it doesn't meet the first condition. So what should you do? You should shut down. But what do most people do? So therefore, the answer is number 4. Reduce output to 0. That is what you call shut down. But what do most people do? Most people, they don't compare one. They don't look at option number 1. And I'll tell you the good news. In A levels, I also got this wrong. I also realized this later. Right? I also did not check the first condition. I did not know there is a first condition like this. Okay? When I get a question like this, what I do is I first check MR equals MC. Ah, MR is 6, MC is 6. I realized this later when I was teaching for the next batch. Because then I explained, I said uh, just check MR equals MC. But then when I checked the marking scheme and I realized, oh shit, I also got this wrong. Okay? So what do people do is, this is what I also would have done when I did A-levels and just think guys, now to do A-levels, how many times I would have done past papers, how many times I would have studied and gone, right? I still got it wrong and I still had, still got an island rack. So that means I'm also a normal person just like you and me, right? You all are also still equally capable, don't give up, thing to point out. So MR is 6, this is also 6. So what will people do? People will say, ah, MR and MC is the same. So therefore leave output unchanged. But if you do that, that is wrong. Because why? In this verb, 
their price is not even enough to cover their average variable cost so they have to shut down only if this condition is met then only you can check for the second condition don't jump to the second condition without checking the first condition is that clear they have to shut down and go not leave output unchanged do at the current level no fine guys okay if you got that question means you were at a better level than what i was during my year okay. good point right so i would have got 2 out of 5 okay that is basically it you know this one i explain okay right how much did you get out of 5 this is 16 17 18 19 20 fire of 5 even if you are four that means you are you at my level still good right in 5 how do i find mr because remember this marginal revenue is the price mr equals ar equals price okay i was from the 2017 investors fine right so uh if you've got five out of five congrats you are at a level better than me than what i was during ala okay 17 was fine we'll move to 2018 then 